Okay, this is going to be lots of fun. They uh, said, uh, you know, four minutes, 16 seconds. It just sounded like after you read a few tweets, this would be like a, a you know, an hour-long lecture. Like, this is a lot of content for the tweet, uh, you, people used to tweeting. So, this is a sprawling bit of airtime you're being given today. <laughs> and... But it actually kind of reminded me of radio because you really have tight little blocks. So I really appealed. Like, you got to get it down to the road show. Hey, Dumbchuck, he's a radio guy. He knows this. He's going to be up first. And in honor of uh, sort of keeping it brief, I thought I should do absolutely no preparation for uh, introducing anyone, you know. <laughs> Just kind of let it all kind of go free. And, but I would think that I would allow myself the luxury of asking each person one question about themselves before I introduce them. And I would base their introduction introduction on that. And so to that end, David is going to be talking about bed bugs, as you know, so I just asked him, have you ever had crabs? <laughs> and he has. <laughs> He's had them three times. <laughs> and he basically turned himself into a service for his friends who then came to him and he had to explain what to do with the colada. And so he has, a, he had a lifetime of service in insect removal. And for therefore, he is our resident expert today on bed, to, uh, bed bugs. David Demchuk, please. All right. That's a far better presentation than what you're getting out of me. Um, am I on? Do I go? Is this a yes? Uh -oh. yes. Go. All right. So, yes, I am talking about bed bugs. Um, bed bugs are, of course, like politicians. They bleed us dry, they make us itch, and we just can't seem to get rid of them. And that's no offense to any bed bugs in the audience. Are, has anyone got bed bugs? Hands? Hands? I, uh, Mark Kuznicki, that's good. Okay. Um, everyone's moving away now. Um, DDT wiped them out in the 1960s and 70s, but now they're back with a vengeance. Toronto Public Health investigated nearly 1,500 cases in 2008, up from just 150 cases in 2006. Um, there are wingless insects, small and flat, about the size of an apple seed, as you can see in that. Uh, they generally come out at night to feed, and they can find you by your body warmth and by your breath. Yay, I'm ahead. <laughs> Uh, they feed you by they feed on you by squirting an anesthetic saliva into you to break up your blood cells and then sucking the stuff back out. It's the saliva that causes the reaction, the welts that many people experience. You're disgusting, That's true. Like most of us, they don't want to live near their food source, but they don't want to be disturbed. They can nest in your mattress, but they can also live under your baseboards, in the cracks of your bread frame and furniture, and underneath your box spring. So you're all checking at home when you get there. It doesn't matter who you are, where you live, or how much you make, until you want to get rid of them. That's another story. It's a long, expensive, soul-destroying process. If you live in Rosedale, you can hire an exterminator and replace all your furniture. But what if you live in St. Jamestown? Bed bugs come and go everywhere else in the city, but when there's no money to treat or prevent them, bed bugs come and stay. So why talk about bed bugs in an event like this? Well, Toronto has faced a few blood-sucking pests before. <laughs> like, for example... This man. When this man ran the province 12 years ago, he downloaded all the social services to the municipalities, but forgot to download the funds to pay for them. These services have been eroding ever since. And this man promised in two campaigns that those services would be uploaded back to the province. Only now has this started. It's a process that will take 10 years, and it could be stopped at any time. There we go. The city's most effective agency in fighting health, uh, in fighting bed bugs, has been Toronto Public Health, but they're doing it with no new money and no new staff. Thanks to the Harris legacy, Ontario is the only province where public health services are paid for out of local property taxes. As you can see from this chart, eight cents from each, each tax dollar goes to, back to the municipality, where the provincial and federal governments get 92 cents. We can't pay for our social services with property taxes alone, and we can't keep cutting services to make ends meet. Things have to change, and they have to change now. Our city councillors and our mayor must fight to have social service costs returned to the province, and we have to elect people who will fight that fight. <laughs> I'm too fast. The province must take back its role of funding public health, and it must support and expand the Toronto Bedbug Project, making it permanent for the foreseeable future. <laughs> yeah. 
City councillors must work with public health and the community to identify problem buildings and problem landlords, and that includes Toronto community housing, and ensure that minimum housing standards are being maintained and enforced. Above all, Toronto must have a coherent and coordinated strategy from all levels of government on inequalities in income, housing, and health. These three things are intertwined, and their byproducts affect all our lives and the lives of our city itself. Thanks to cheaper worldwide travel, less toxic insecticides, and a pass-the-buck attitude from the powers that be, it seems the bed bug is probably here to stay. And the people who are most vulnerable are those who don't have the information or the resources to fight them. Toronto should be and can be a city that helps its poorest and least capable to live better lives on every front, even this one. And this is dedicated to Julius Deutsch. Thank you.